On today's episode, we're going to an amazing lake in Oklahoma to fish and explore the wide open outdoors. I'm traveling with my good friend Tim Teal in his Peterbilt rig to Oklahoma. Hey guys, Dave Vault here, a Broken Bow Lake coming your way, Oklahoma style. Hey Rudy, looking forward to catching some fish with you. Oh yeah, looking forward to taking y'all out this morning. Yeah, uh, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm uh, Rudy Rudisil. I've lived here for 61 years. I've guided out of the marina for 30. Uh, I fished this river before it was ever a lake with my grandfather. My grandfather's the one that taught me how to fish this lake. Uh, we used to float down it in inner tubes with a tow sack tied around it with two holes cut in it, throwing old H&H &H spinner baits, catching them smallmouth. Come on. And then they decided to build a lake and everybody had to move off the river. There was lots of people that lived on this river, lots of people. Hochi Town was over here across the river. Uh, the bridge is still there, it's 85 foot deep down there to it. and. Uh, it's a great lake, it's deep, it's clear. Uh, it's a uh, core lake, so it fluctuates up and down, up and down. They're constantly letting water out, making electricity. So uh, we'll go out this morning and see if we can't find some of them big slab crappie on Broken Bow. Come on, Broken Bow. All right, Rudy just pulled the throttle back on the Yamaha. I think we're in our first spot, wide open style. Well, Rudy, I've only uh, crappie fished a couple times, but uh, how do you do it here? What are we gonna work with? Well, we're gonna start out with a uh, Bobby Garland uh, monkey milk jig with a pink head, and we're also gonna use a minna. We'll probably have a pole in each hand. We'll be jigging the, uh, the jig straight up and down. We'll just let the minna set and uh, Hopefully we'll catch some big crappie right here off the first one. All right, let's put it in action. All right, guys, here we are. Hey, uh, I got picked up by a rod company out of Missouri. It's called Ascension Rod Company. It's new out of Lebanon, Missouri. The guys are real good. The prices are real good. They have a lifetime warranty on them. All you pay is shipping to get them back, sent back to them. They're good rods, folks. They got crappie rods, they got bass rods, whatever you need. Ascension Rods, go on Facebook, website, look them up. Dave, what you'll do, you drop that jig, just flip your bell and drop that jig down about eight to 10 foot. Okay. Simply let it go down. When it gets down there, all you do is flip your bell and you simply jig it straight up and straight down, just real lightly. Now, when you feel them hit it, you better jerk instantly. Crappie can suck it in and spit it out faster than anything. So you gotta be, uh, you gotta be on your toes to catch them on the jig. Always something new. We're jigging for crappie. <laughs> that is classic. Let's put it back in there. You wanted that? Watch this. Here it comes. All right. First fish of the day. <laughs> that lure did the trick. Is this a beautiful, beautiful lake or what? These are the Kamishi Mountains. There's a lot of history here. In my left hand, I've got a minnow, and then on my right hand, I got a jig. Double it up on wide open. All right, guys, the way I hook them in the summertime is I hook them through the bottom lip and come out the top of the head like that. Or if you go through their eyeballs, they can't see them coming at them. What you want to do is just drop it down there, just like that, and just simply hold the minna. Pick your other rod up with your hand over here, and just kind of jig it up and down real slow. Fish on. Look at that rod bend in action. That's a good fish, Rudy. Let me sneak out of the way. 
crappie. Oh yeah, folks, here's a nice broken bow crappie right here. Nice crappie. Yep, fish on a jig. Look at there, oh yeah. Look at here, look at here. Look at that crappie. That is a big one. That is a crappie there, folks. And that rod was not even manned and he took that jig. There's your broken bow crappie. Right there. Rudy, uh, you ever heard about Bigfoot? Oh yeah, the legendary Bigfoot yep. in the Kaimishi Mountains. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, supposedly they live up in the Kaimishis, which is north of here. It's, uh, actually, I've never seen Bigfoot, but uh, there's you know there's quite a few folks up there in the mountains that live up there that claim they've seen him, but I haven't seen him running around down here on the lake yet. I look for him every day, but maybe one of these days I'll see him. I think we wore out our welcome on this spot. We're going to make a move. Today we're on the fourth largest lake in Oklahoma, the Broken Bow. It's on the Mountain Fork River. We're nine miles northeast of the town of Broken Bow. The surface area on this lake is impressive. It's 14,000 acres and there's 180 miles of shoreline. It's basically a rock bed floor. So the bedrock is rock solid and there's large cavernous areas and so there's a tremendous amount of structure down under this water. The maximum depth is 200 feet. This place is over the top. All right, guys, this spot was not productive. Captain says we're making a move. All right, guys, as we make this turn around this bend right here, we're leaving the park and we're going into the Mountain Fork River. So now we're going up the river, see if we can find some crappie there. Right here we have the river. This is Mountain Fork River right here. We're coming into the Flatwoods. We call this the Flatwoods. Guys, when I was a young man floating down this river with my grandfather, there was a sawmill that sat right over there, where that, right over in that opening. And they cut cross ties. They hauled them across this island. You know, it was dry land. They hauled them across here through rough branch all the way out to the highway, which is about nine miles. It was a portable sawmill run by two brothers right here. Joe and John Ponyo. Obviously, they're eating something on the surface. Shed. Fish are up. Shed. Okay. We got a, We got the biggest shad hatch that I've seen in probably 15 years this year. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Oh. Good crappie, Captain. Good one, Captain Rudy. Another fine broken bow crappie. Yeah, guys, this crappie hole here, we're sitting in 41 foot of water. But what happened here was there's a tree right here under the water that we actually dove down and tied a rope to it, came back and tied our trees to it, and the trees are actually hanging on this tree that's in the water. They're just suspended down there. And what we're doing, we're fishing down about 15 to 17 foot over the top of these trees. These are cedar trees that we tied and put out here. And uh, crappie does not like the sunshine, just like we don't. So therefore, when the sun comes out and gets bright, they stick their heads in this brush. And you get right over the top of it to catch them. Good fish. Just like that. 
Oh, it's a bass. I was going to say he's fighting a little harder than a crappie. We got a spotted bass, Kentucky. Kentucky bass. Look how filled that belly is. He's been chasing them shad this morning out here. Just full. But this is a spotted bass. They don't get real big up here. If you catch a four pounder up here, you've done something. They, uh, they're plentiful, but they just don't get real big. And the best way to distinguish a, sm a spotted bass is to stick your finger on their tongue. They have a rough patch on their tongue. If you feel that rough patch, you have a Kentucky, not a large mouth, not a small mouth, but a Kentucky bass. Top water, top water bass, baby. On four pound test. Big old Kentucky. <laughs> now that's what I came over here to broken bow for. So Captain, this is a spotted bass? That's a spotted bass, that's a nice spot. Oh, I'm gonna feel for that. Yep, yep. Feel that rough patch in its tongue? Does that feel like sandpaper? Yep. All right, say hello to my little friend on wide open. <laughs> ah. Let's catch some more. Another nice broken bow. Crappie. Oh, good crappie. Look at that one. Another nice broken bow crappie. Large mouth? Is there a large mouth crappie and a small mouth crappie? No? Thought there was. Oh. Came here to get my lessons. This is a good one here. Oh yeah. This good one here, Papa. Look oh. at that. Now that's what we came for. Barely hooked. Fell out of its mouth. Nice crappie. Rudy's Guide Service. Right here on Broken Bow Lake. Come see me. Sure <laughs> Catch a fish, Rudy. You're smoking them, Rudy. Seven or eight Come on, Shad. Don't be going away on me. Jig up. Jig it. I'm gonna flip a jig at them with the men out there, too. Rudy and I just couldn't take it. We see these bass blowing up, and I had to get a cast in there and see if we can catch one. They're pushing up Shad. Ah, oh, dang. Get him. Ah, oh, he didn't get it, but we got a good blow up. You know, Rudy was talking to me a minute ago about these bass. They come up to the surface and they start blowing up on shad and they're ghost fish because they're here and then they're gone so we missed that really big group of fish that we're feeding we're gonna keep hunting them the ghost fish man i tell you that was so close to getting a good bass on this top water what's that, the plan now since it kind of slowed down since it slowed down in here we're going to go up to what we call wasp nest bluff they're big bluffs up here i'm going to take y'all up there and uh, show y'all the bluffs and uh, see if they're schooling there okay Chase right. down some more crappie, wide open style. Okay guys. I'm just gonna show y'all this right here. Let me kill the motor here before we can look at this and discuss it a little bit. Guys, when I was a young boy with my grandfather, the river goes right out here and goes way in here towards Bull Creek and Walsnaps Bluff. But to, for to forge the river, you had to come by Mr. Bill Woods' house, which is right there by those cypress trees. You drove right by his house to go over here to forge the river to go into Bull Creek. He lived right there till the government decided to build the lake. He had nine boys and a girl right there. When uh, they decided to build the lake, he had to gather up and move. He formed this flat. This is a big flat off the river. Right to the north of us is a cove that's going in between those hills yonder. That's called Whiskey Branch. Do you know why it's called that? 
No, sir, tell me. They used to make moonshine in there. I like them already. They used to make moonshine. That's why we call it Whiskey Branch right there. But uh, I used to sit and listen to Mr. Bill Woods tell me stories when I was a young boy on his porch waiting on my granddad to uh, get everything ready to go across the river over here. Uh, we're in 106 foot of water right here. Can, can I jump off like right there? Yeah. I told Dave to jump from the bluff and look at there he goes, folks. Woo! Yeah. Is that a bite? Yeah. Roger that. Uh oh, I think I got Tim too. No, it don't have to be nothing. Put your finger right there. They don't have to, this is a keeper? Yeah, they don't have to be nothing here. Oh, shit. No length. Well, you know what? I'm so used to Pat Mays Lake where they got a, a length limit. He's a keeper. They don't have a size limit. You keep 37 of these per man. But you got to have an Oklahoma license. Got one small crappie out of here. Thought there'd be more. Captain was pretty excited about this spot. Well, the beauty is there's a lot more. Weed piles to go find. This is Bodock tree right here. They used to use them for fence posts because they last a long, long time. We're going to see if this brush pile is holding any crappie. Oh. And he come off. Quick release. Well, Captain's maneuvering the boat with the trolling motor, but the Bodock tree did not produce but one bite, and he got off. So it's all about moving around, covering water, wide open. On this episode, Captain Rudy caught almost all the fish. Tim and I just rode along with Rudy. It was an awesome time exploring the lake. Rudy was saying that this is not a fishing marina. This is a recreation marina. And they have over a hundred boats you can rent. And you can pull tubers and water ski and do all that stuff, wakeboard and do all the dadgum uh, jet skis and all of that, but it's not a fishing marina. So you can't buy bait here or lures here or rods or anything. Except this man right here. Come got, see me. Got the handle on it. He's the only fisherman here. Yeah, it was a little slow today, but we still managed to catch some crappie, a couple of bass. Any day on the water, especially new water, is a good day. That's right. Yeah, any day is a good day to go fishing better than work, wouldn't you say? I love it. Ah. Let's clean some fish. Yes, sir. Whew. Get back. But you know what? <laughs> We're taking some home, and we enjoyed Broken Bow. Beautiful lake. You know, I think Captain Rudy caught most of the fish on today's uh, fishing trip, but you know what? We got fish to take home, and we got a chance to really explore the beautiful lake, Broken Bow. I even got a chance to jump off one of the cliffs and hit the water. Good times, man. Yes, sir. The foothills of the Kamishi Mountains. This is why we call it God's country. Rudy, you got our fish? Yeah, Dave, got them right here, buddy. Oh, All man. Right. You know one thing about the wide open outdoors is there's always a guy that you just don't know until like four hours ago, I met Rudy here in Oklahoma and we wanted to fish Broken Bow. We knew that August was gonna be hot, not necessarily hot fishing, hot time of the year, but this lake is beautiful, crystal clear, and we wanted to come catch some fish. So that's what we did. But what's the best time to really be here, Rudy? I would say uh, March, April, May is your prime time for your crappie, uh, your bass also. When it gets real, real hot, the fishing gets slow here. But now I do have a lake over about 28 miles from here, a little small lake that is just full of big bass. And the hotter, the better. They're, they're shallow year round. I mean, it's it's a phenomenal lake to bass fish this time of year. Uh, if y'all wants to come back to any time soon, we'd go do it. 
Well, that's the plan. Here in the wide open, it's always about the next adventure. And the Mountain Fork River, just around the corner, four miles of trophy trout fishing that's stocked for big, big fish. So we'll be back. We'll play around with those uh, bass that you talked yes, about. Sir. We'll get the crappie in the spring, and then we'll get the trout in the river. So thanks for your time, yes, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you. Glad uh, to do it with you. Uh, it was a pleasure. More to go, right? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for your time today, and we'll see you in a wide open outdoor Out adventure. <laughs> Wideopensportsman.com. Just get out there. Visit WideOpenSportsman.com every day for your daily fix of adrenaline. You know, it's always wide open.